Hi everyone, welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. Um, this is uh, going to be my ninth uh, lesson on derivatives, uh, which is a sub-series uh, of my series on first-year calculus. And I think finally uh, I'm ready to derive the, um, the f come up with formulas for derivatives of all the six uh, standard trig, trig functions, trigonometric functions. They're written out here in the middle. But anyway, let's begin. So um, just here's an enlarged view. So here's what they are. And you can see, it's kind of nice. These formulas are pretty nice, as you can see. It turns out the derivatives of all the trigonometric functions are, are either other trigonometric functions or products or powers of such. They're, they're easily expressed in terms of trig functions, which is a pretty nice result. And keep in mind that, like I said earlier, the uh, arguments of all these trig functions are radians. This is always the case whenever we do calculus. Uh, so anyway, um, anyway, so we want to derive these uh, formulas. So let's start with the first two, sine and cosine. Those are actually the hardest ones to derive. Once we have those, you'll see that the other four are very easy. Uh, but the, the sine and cosine require using limits. And, uh, there's actually one more limit that I haven't derived yet. Uh, I think in the last video I derived the limit on top. The limit is t approaches 0 of sine t over t is 1. Um, I showed you how to prove that. If you haven't watched that video yet, I think you should. Uh, and then the second one I want to drive is the one on the bottom here. The limit is t approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine t over t. This one turns out to be 0. So let's do that, because we do need this result, it turns out. We need both of these when we're going to compute the derivatives of sine and cosine. So um, so how do we prove this uh, second trigonometric limit? Well, I do it here. You have to do a little bit of, of trigonometric manipulation first. So you can use some trig identities. And So let's first rewrite 1 minus cosine t over t. So you'll notice that you can, you can always multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing. So here they're just multiplying them both by 1 plus cosine t. This is kind of a useful trick in general. Sometimes if you want to simplify a fraction, you can multiply the numerator and denominator by something that kind of simplifies uh, at least the numerator. You usually want to simplify the numerator. So if you're multiplying 1 minus cosine t times 1 plus cosine t, you're just going to get 1 minus cosine squared t, but that's just sine squared t. So that simplifies that. And then in the denominator, we don't have to simplify the denominator. We're left with t times 1 plus cosine t. So this is the identity we need to evaluate this limit. So now let's do it. So now we have the limit as t approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine t over t. And I'm just rewriting uh, the fraction. So we have the limit as t goes to 0 of sine squared t over t times 1 plus cosine t. And I think I, I already told you that you can always uh, write a limit of a product as a product of limits. So we can split up uh, this fraction as a product. So it's just sine t over t times sine t over 1 plus cosine t. Well, we already know this the limit is t approaches 0 of sine t over t is 1, because I already proved that. And then the other limit, um, we really don't have to do any work because we, we can just evaluate the numerator and denominator. Sine of 0 is 0, as I think you all know. And cosine of 0 is 1. So the second fraction is going to be 0 over 2. That's a 0. So the whole limit is just 1 times 0 or 0. So that, so I just proved the second limit. So now that we have both of these limits, now we can finally uh, uh, compute the derivative of sine and cosine. So here's, here's how to compute the derivative of sine. We use the definition of the derivative. So remember that, you know, the derivative of f of x is limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Uh, and then, uh, so the, the thing on top, the thing in blue, I think they skipped a step here, but this is really just sine of quantity x plus h. And you might have remembered, this is the addition rule for, for sine. It turns out sine of x plus h is sine x cosine h plus cosine x sine h. That's an identity. So we're taking that and we're subtracting sine x. And the denominator is h. And now we just move things around a little bit. And uh, you'll see that we can simplify this. Uh, they, they do four lines here to simplify it. 
But finally, you get the limit as h approaches 0 of sine x times cosine h minus 1 over h. Well, we know what this limit is. Well, we, we computed that limit on the right. That's just 0. And we can factor out sine x because that doesn't depend on h. So we get sine of x times 0. And then the, the, the other term is the limit as h approaches 0 of cosine x times sine h over h. Well, we already know the limit of sine h over h. That's the other uh, trig limit we derived. That's 1. So we get sine x times 0 plus cosine x times 1. And that's just cosine x. So that's how you prove that the derivative of sine x is cosine x. Pretty nice. And now, what about cosine? It's almost the same derivation. Uh, this one's a little nicer because they don't skip any steps. But let's just go through it again. So the derivative of cosine x is the limit, according to the definition derivative. It's just the limit as h approaches 0 of cosine x plus h minus cosine x all over h. And now we're using the addition formula for cosine. That's equal to cosine x cosine h minus sine x sine h. And we're still subtracting cosine x. So you can uh, you can simplify this a little bit by uh, noticing that there's two terms multiplying cosine x, namely cosine h and 1. So we go cosine h x times cosine h minus 1 minus sine x sine h. I think you can see this is very similar to the last one we did. So, uh, you know, the, the thing on the right uh, in the fourth line here, cosine h minus 1 over h, that's just the negative of 1 minus cosine h over h. And we already know that that limit goes to 0, so it's negative goes to 0 as well. And cosine of 0 is just 1, so we're going to 1 times 0, that's just 0. And now we have sine of x, and uh, um, that's just, uh, and then we have the limit as h approaches 0 of sine h over h. Well, that we know is 1, so we're going to get just sine minus sine x when we're done. So that's how we prove the, the derivative. That's why we derive the formula for the derivative of cosine x. Pretty nice. And these are easy to remember. Derivative of sine is cosine, and derivative of cosine is negative sine. Uh, pretty nice uh, um, formulas, I think. And now the other four, like I said, we don't have to worry about limits anymore. Here's a derivation of the other four trig function derivatives. Um, so let's just go through them one at a time. And I have them kind of paired. Uh, so it turns out that it, tangent and cotangent are basically the same derivation. So we're secant and cosecant. Just like sine and cosine. There's these kind of interesting duality between trig functions and their cofunctions. And let's just go through. Let's start with tan. So tan, as I think you all know, is sine x over cosine x. So we can write the derivative of tangent x. This is the derivative of the ratio of sine x over cosine x. But we know how to, we can just use the quotient rule now to compute this derivative. So well, let's just do that. Remember the quotient rule? Yeah, in the numerator, you have first the denominator of the thing you're taking the derivative of times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. So that's going to be cosine x times the derivative of sine x minus sine x times the derivative of cosine x. That's what you have in the numerator, and then you square the denominator. Uh, so that's cosine squared x in the denominator. And uh, we already know the derivative of sine x is cosine x, and the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x. So the derivative, the numerator becomes cosine squared x plus sine squared x. I think you guys all know this is equal to 1. So, and then we still have cosine squared x in the denominator. So when we're done with this, we get 1 over cosine squared x. But... I think you know that uh, 1 over cosine is also known as the secant. So the, the result is secant squared of x. So that's the derivative of tangent x, secant squared of x. Not quite as nice as the formulas for sine and cosine, but not bad. And uh, the der I'm not going to go through the, the uh, um, derivation of the derivative of cotangent. It's basically the same proof. You're just using cofunctions in place of the original functions. And when you're done, you're going to get, uh, I think I left out a minus sign here. That should be minus cosecant squared of x when you're done. And I think I made the same mistake on the bottom right too. Yeah, the derivative of secant x, uh, and that, now we can just use the reciprocal rule, which is a special case of the quotient rule. So secant is just the reciprocal of cosine. So do you have the derivative of 1 over cosine? And, uh, you know, when you take the derivative of 
of uh, one over something, you just get the derivative of the thing in the numerator and the thing squared in the denominator with a minus sign. So you're going to get uh, minus the derivative of cosine over cosine squared. Well, we know the derivative of cosine is minus sine. So this is just sine x over cosine squared x. You can write it as sine x over cosine x times 1 over cosine x. Sine x over cosine x is just tan, uh, um, tangent. And 1 over cosine x is secant. So when you're done, you get secant x times tangent x. And same for the derivative of cosecant, except again, I left out a minus sign at the end. Should be minus cosecant x times cotangent x. So those are the other four trig uh, function derivatives. So we've just, uh, I've just shown you how to uh, uh, compute the derivatives of all the, all the, all six uh, of the standard trig functions. Um, so those are nice results to know. And here they are again written out correctly. They put this minus signs where they belong. So anyway, thank you for watching uh, this video. Long live math, and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.